We are joined now by Israel Martinez. He is a business owner in Mississippi and also happens to be vice president of the Latin American Business Association of Mississippi. Uh, Israel, we're glad to have you with us on uh, At Issue. First of all, you, you immigrated to America from Mexico and came straight to Mississippi. Tell me how you came to, to be in Mississippi in the first place. Oh, thank you for having me, Wilson. Well, my mother came first. She came to Seattle. And well, the job uh, conditions were not good there for her. Mm -hmm. And then she came to Mississippi and then she brought us, uh, me and my sister. So you joined your mother and the rest of your family a year later and that was what, 13 years ago? Yes, 13 years ago. And then you came to start your own business. Tell me a little bit about that. That is correct. Uh, this is actually my third business. I started mm -hmm. two businesses before mm -hmm. uh, and then I sold them. And now I'm working on this uh, third business which is Tor Shell Storm Shelters. Storm Shelters, tornado mm -hmm. storm shelters, something that uh, a lot of Mississippians need and have. And all three of these businesses were in Mississippi? Correct. And so you have an interesting perspective uh, from, from where you have come from and where you sit now. What was the process like for you to become a legal immigrant in Mississippi? Well, it's, it's a hard process for, for immigrants, definitely, because the, there are just few options. Uh, either you have a family member who sponsors you, or you have uh, you know, a job offer from a company located in the United States and then they can you know, pay the fees and all that, and then you come to the United States. So how long did it take you to complete that process? Well, it take, for, for me, it took about three years. Really? Yes, but, uh, but actually, I came here to the United States without documents. And uh, you know, it, 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 it was rough mm. for me. Mm -hmm. And I was 17 years old at that point. 17, here with no documents, trying to become a legal citizen. And Correct. eventually, I guess by the time you were I'm 20? Still, I'm still working on that, actually. You're still working I'm on still it? Working. It's a long process, and it's a lot of red tape. So even though you haven't completed the process, you've still been you still managed to create three businesses here in Mississippi. Correct. Uh, to, before you could become an actual citizen uh, uh, of, uh, of Mississippi and of the United States, do you think that that process that I mean, that's a long time? Do you think it takes too long? Do you think it's too complicated? I think it is. Uh, I think that the the system is outdated. There uh, is a definitely a need for uh, a reform. You know, to make things easier for employers and of course employees. And families to you know to live in this uh, you know in this country. That I think that there's, there's the system is outdated and, and uh, the immigration reform is needed. What what has been the most uh, uh, surprising thing you've seen in this whole process? Like that, like where you said, I can't believe they need me to do that, or they want this form, or they want me to answer that question. What's been the biggest surprise through the process? Well, even even though if you have like a, 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 your mother who is a citizen, mm -hmm. if you are a son and you are over 21 years old. The waiting period is 20 years. There are a number of undocumented uh, workers, uh, people who live here in, in the United States and, and in Mississippi. Do you think if the process, if the path toward legal citizenship were less complicated, that we'd have fewer folks here illegally who want to be uh, working, producing, productive members of the society? Definitely. The amount of uh, illegal immigration or illegal immigrants or undocumented immigrants, it's 11 million at this point. But definitely, if there are you know, easier steps, they will come you know, with documents. And what happens is that uh, there are many opportunities to work here. And they come and they stay here because actually it's hard to come. So if things were easier, they will go back there often and create jobs in their country, not just in Mexico, but you know, everywhere. And we're talking about two different things here, whether the path to citizenship, the path that you're still on, and the other one being just to come to America legally uh, to work. But they're both difficult, are they not? Correct. And I guess there's a misconception from uh, local people, and this is what I've seen in my you know, 13 years, is that uh, a lot of people think that all the immigrants want to become a citizen. You know? And that's not the case. Mm. You know, a lot of immigrants, actually, they just want to come to work, and they want to go back to their country. Um, because you know that's their family. That's where you grow up. That's where you have your your your, uh, your friends, etc. So right now the process is difficult. They end up staying here without documents. We've talked to farmers who say they can't get by. They can't harvest their crops. They can't plant their crops unless they have help from uh, from immigrants, from people who come from other countries to help them on their farms. Do you, do you think there are a lot of people who are willing and able? to take to, to, to fill those positions and yet can't because of all these issues they have to go through first? Definitely, and there are caps. There are, uh, we were doing some numbers, actually the amount of uh, visas available for, for agriculture is 60,000 a year. But there are many people that would love to come 
you know, I guess if the Congress or whoever is in charge of the, uh, opening this to allow more people to come, you know, definitely there are many, uh, I mean, the, the labor is available in, every, uh, in several countries. Again, not just Mexico, but several, several other countries. For example, Haiti right now, you know, they need help. It will be a great idea. Do you know of uh, illegal immigrants working in the agriculture industry in Mississippi right now? Oh, yes, many. There are many, many people are here without documents, and they work not just in agriculture, but in different areas, uh, hotels, uh, restaurants. But yes, definitely work in the agriculture industry. How are they still able to get and keep those jobs if they're not here legally? Well, uh, the farmers and the employers, I guess, they hire them uh, and pay them cash. That's one of the, the, the biggest, I guess, issues that we have. So they don't ever ask. It's don't ask, don't tell. Just uh, give me an honest day's work, and we'll call it even at the end of the day. Correct. But there's another way. Uh, undocumented immigrants, they can get what is called an ITIN number. That's provided by the IRS. And the IRS asks you, if you make some money here in the United States, you can submit that. So some immigrants, they use that, and they still pay taxes. So even though they are not here legally, they still go through government channels and pay taxes on what they earn. Correct. The IRS always gets the money. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what specific changes do you think need to be made, especially to this whole paperwork process, uh, to help these workers who would like to come to this country or who perhaps are already here but not legally? Uh, what needs to change specifically to make it easier for them to legally work here and then everything could be above board and not uh, pa no money passing hands under the table? Well, it's unfortunate, but that's the truth. You know, it's, it's, it's actually both parties that control the Congress. Uh, you know, the Republicans and immigrants, they don't agree on how this is going to get, uh, you know, is going to be uh, addressed. But I think that both need to come to an agreement where the 11 million people that are here without documents get some type of permit to work, you know, to get them out of the shadows and to go through the legal process. Um, there are some uh, candidates that say, you know, hey, you know, let's send everybody back. Actually, this is actually going to hurt the economy. And it's going to hurt the families. But to get them out and start a new process, because right now, as I said, the process is just horrible. It's terrible. And by doing that, you know, the government is going to start, you know, getting all, all the money, actually, because they get some money, but not all the money that they could get, could get from these uh, immigrants. And immigrants actually will start buying houses. We've seen this here in Jackson. I've seen it. You know, when they uh, have a job, they start buying houses, they start buying cars and several other things. So that's what, actually they improve the economy. And we're talking about 11 million. What do you say to the argument, and how does it make you feel to hear someone... Uh, who says that if we have a lot of uh, immigrants coming from other countries and filling these positions, it's pushing Americans, uh, native uh, residents of this country, out of those jobs, that, they're t that, that immigrants are taking jobs away from people who were born here or who are here legally? Well, I disagree with that. You know, I've seen that. Uh, there are plenty of jobs, first of all. Sometimes they're, they're the, the local people or, you know, uh, those who do, have, do not have a job, they don't want to go to, you know, a hard job. That's actually what happens. And, um, you know, these, these immigrants, they're actually they are not taking these jobs from these people, you know. Those jobs are available. It happens that, you know, they come and take it. Well, you know, it's because it was available. Israel Martinez, thank you for your insight. On thank you very much.